Hello, so I'm going to talk about online learning with limited switching. This is joint work with Kunal Talwar. It's well motivated by the previous talk. Um, so uh, the setup is the classic experts or bandit setup. Um, this has been talked about in previous talks, but just to make sure it's clear, I'll review it briefly. Uh, so this is a repeated game between an algorithm and an adversary. Uh, in each iteration, the algorithm chooses one out of n possible actions, and the adversary chooses losses on all the actions. The algorithm then incurs the regret for the, la for the action it took. Afterwards, it receives some feedback with which it can make better decisions in the future. Uh, the type of feedback it receives depends on the setting we're in. If we're in the expert setting, uh, the algorithm observes losses for all the actions. This is often called the full information setting. In the bandit setting, the algorithm observes only loss of the action it took. The standard uh, performance metric is the regret, which is defined as the difference between the cumulative loss of the algorithm and the cumulative loss of the best expert. Um, and uh, intuitively, if an algorithm has small regret, then uh, its performance is uh, close to the performance it would have if it knew the best action at the beginning of the game. Uh, in this talk, we'll be also interested in a secondary metric, uh, which is the s number of switches the algorithm makes between, consecutive, uh, between actions and consecutive iterations. Um, for the sake of time, I'll uh, refer to the paper for applications, but I would dare to say that any application you've ever heard of in experts or bandits, uh, switching is bad. So uh, we have here two competing objectives, regret and switches, and you want an algorithm that has uh, low uh, regret and low switches. Uh, the literature has two ways of formalizing this trade-off. The first is the switching cost uh, setting. So here you're trying to minimize regret, but every time you switch, you incur an additional loss of uh, C. The second is the switching budget setting, where you're again trying to minimize regret, but your algorithm is limited to a hard cap of a certain number of switches. So maybe only 100 switches the whole game or a square root of T switches the whole game. Uh, said simply, the switching cost setting corresponds to expensive but unlimited switches, whereas the switching budget setting corresponds to free but limited switches. Um, the literature has, uh, in the past, mostly focused on the switching cost setting uh, because it's very practically motivated and, uh, frankly, a bit easier to analyze. Uh, the budget setting, though, is also interesting. Um, as we'll see later in the talk, understanding the switching budget setting allows for a very fine-grained understanding of the trade-off between regret and switches. Uh, for context for our uh, contributions, I'll just sketch uh, the state of the art. Um, and uh, for sake of time, I'll just sketch it for the expert setting. We also have results for the bandits, but as you'll see, the most interesting phenomena happen for the expert setting. So in the classical setup, where you have uh, no penalization for switching, the mini max rate is very well understood, and there are algorithms that achieve the optimal regret, both in expectation and with high probability. In the switching cost setting, the mini max rate is also well understood, and there's many algorithms uh, which achieve both the optimal rate for regret and switches in expectation. So some of these algorithms are follow the perturbed leader, shrinking dartboard, um, prediction by random walk perturbation. Um, but even though these algorithms achieve the optimal rates in expectation, uh, they don't with high probability. Um, and so this was raised as an open problem a few years back. In the switching budget setting, even less is known. Uh, there are no non-trivial upper bounds or lower bounds known. Um, and just to kind of sketch the difficulty, um, for upper bounds, so for algorithms, uh, the difficulty is really the hard cap on switches. Uh, you might try to adapt a good switching cost algorithm to switching budget setting. Um, and this works if you have a high probability guarantee on the number of switches it makes. But if you only have only an expectation guarantee, uh, you have no way to control its tails and you can pay a lot. So uh, our paper has several contributions. The main two are to resolve both the things in red. So the first is um, the first high probability algorithms uh, for both regret and switches. Uh, we also show this extends efficiently to online combinatorial optimization with limited switching. Uh, the second contribution is a complete characterization of the complexity landscape of the switching budget problem. Um, for both the experts and bandit problems, for all switching budgets, uh, for both expectation and high probability guarantees, we have matching upper bounds and lower bounds for all these. Um, and one uh, nice corollary is that this implies a certain duality between the switching costs and budget settings. Uh, by which I mean, if you give me a, a switching cost C, I can give you a, a budget S as a function of C, and the two problems have the same complexity. And uh, 
the, the mapping is a, is a bijection, so these two problems are really dual. Um, so I'll talk about both these contributions. The first one is the high probability algorithms. So um, we give more than just an algorithm, we actually give a framework to uh, produce these algorithms. Uh, it takes in an algorithm that's good in expectation, and I mentioned there's already several, and it outputs an algorithm that's good with high probability. Uh, the idea is, is, is quite simple. So we s uh, split the t iterations into a certain number of uh, variable length epochs, and the idea is to, in each epoch, run your primitive algorithm until you've uh, used a lot of switches, and then you end the epoch and restart with fresh randomness. So two remarks. The first is uh, the fresh randomness is needed just for concentration. Uh, the second remark is, is uh, about the variable length epochs, and this is uh, more nuanced. So the variable length is actually uh, provably essential, uh, and the intuition for this is there are uh, pathological algorithms which have optimal expect expectation guarantees, but have really bad tails. And so if you're in an epoch and uh, you hit this bad tail event and you don't end the epoch, you can pay so much that uh, you'll be screwed for the whole game. Okay, so this uh, framework is, is very simple, um, but the, the proof of the regret uh, is actually surprisingly difficult. And I'll just kind of sketch the, the main obstacle for it. So the idea for, to show high probability for regret is to show the cumulative regret concentrates around uh, the expected regret in a single epoch times the number of epochs. Um, and this seems obvious, but the problem is that whenever you do concentration, you want to show that you're adding up things that are kind of independent. And the problem here is that the adversary can introduce some dependence between the regret in different epochs. And so you have to somehow control that. I can tell you more at the poster session. Um, but we are able to do this for um, algorithms that are similar to follow the perturbed leader, and uh, here are several examples. Uh, so multiplicative follow the perturbed leader, um, prediction by random walk perturbation, and the common total version. Uh, the second thing, uh, second contribution is the complexity landscape of online learning uh, with limited switching. So here you see uh, the, the picture for the bandit setting. I'll show the expert setting shortly. Uh, on the x-axis, you have the, num the switches. So this is a switching budget. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, you have T switches. That's when you have as many switches as you'd ever want. So this is unconstrained, effectively. On the other, ax on the other side, you have uh, no switches. Um, and so here you can see the minimax regret as, as, you, as you vary the switching budget. Uh, on the right side, you have the, uh, the standard minimax rate of square root of T, roughly. And on the left-hand side, if you have no switches, you have T, and the question is, how does it interpolate between these two points? Um, and this, this figure is actually fairly well known. Uh, basically, uh, you interpolate lin linearly in this log-log scale. Uh, what our paper does is it shows the, the, setting, uh, the picture for the expert setting is very different. You have a certain phase transition. So if you have enough switches, you don't need any more. If you have more than square root of T switches, uh, you have the optimal uh, regret rate. And below that, you start paying a lot. And you pay exactly in this kind of linear fashion on the log log scale. Um, so, what much time do I have? Uh, I guess I'll just conclude with uh, the main takeaway is that the behavior for the Bannett problem and the experts problem is just very different when you have costs. Uh, oh, and I should also mention that this picture on the right hand side for the experts, uh, there is none of this picture was known before the paper. Like, uh, because of what I said before about the, the budget setting being very different from the switching cost setting. So all the, all the points on the, on the expert graph are new. Okay, thanks. Any question? Okay, th let's thank the speaker again.